How's it going guys? It's today, well, actually it's probably going to take a couple days, but probably I'll be in one video. Um, work on fastening this swing arm to the frame. Um, the situation with it is, you know, to try to get this so it line, you know, this is lined up with the, the center of the hinging point. Um, building something straight up off the bottom of the frame here. Um, I have the engine here. I can't really get it from above anywhere because, you know, any kind of cross member, you know, you know I can't put a cross member where the, the uh, engine is. Um, I want to be able to, I'm going to fasten one side permanent and the other side I want to be able to unbolt. Um, these are what I'm using to, uh, you see there's a shoulder on there, a seal run on here, the bearing runs on here. Um, you see how they're made. Um, I do plan on putting like some kind of like gusset from here to here. You know, to make it so it doesn't, you know, bend. But anyways, um, what I came up with... Now what I, I also leveled everything here. Everything's level. Um, using this as a level. I go from here to the frame. So the frame and the swing arm is level with each other. So it's like my swing arm might be a little bit twisted, about a degree. But that'll work. Um, I got these. And what I'm going to do is weld this to I can't get it in there weld this to the inside of this frame you know coming up like this off the frame and then this will get you know cut off flat that will get welded to it and I could possibly once I build the structure for the whole deceit I could possibly bring something in you know like a gusset of some kind into you know this this angle. I don't know if I'm displaying is good enough for you guys to get what I'm trying to do here, but um, this side over here will come up off. It's pretty much what you're looking at right there, and, and this will get flat. Um, I do need to put like a flange, a bigger flange on this thing right here, and then this one here will have a flange welded to it with bolt holes, you know, so this side can bolt up. That's my uh, plan. I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to show. But, uh, you know, I might as well make those pieces and then come back and, you know, show you guys what I came up with. But, um, one thing that I was trying to center everything up is everything's level. I have a measurement from right here, the face of this, to the center of this mark right here. And they're both right now, like six at it. Six and an eighth, I think it is. Both sides. So everything is level and straight. Um, so yeah, let's see what we get. Alright, you guys, got those uh, rear swing arm hinging things made. And one of them unbolts. So I can get the swing arm out. And they are exactly the same length. So that was kind of a task with these, is making two parts that's the same, but different because one of them unbolts. And, uh, so yeah, pretty much. Oh, these things will run up just like that, get welded to the frame. And then, uh, like I said, I'll probably put some kind of gussets coming up to them from, like, the seat platform or something like that. Just everything you do about this thing, I gotta try to keep the weight down. And it already this thing weighs a lot already. It weighs a lot. Um, it's uh, it's. I drug this thing off the trailer or on this frame, just the frame alone, on the trailer and off and into this building, and it just, it's already uh, was starting to, a little bit more weight would have been a two man job to get the thing off the trailer and in here. So. I mean, I'm only running uh, 
22, 23 horse, depending on what website you go to, <laughs> what those engine outputs are. Um, potentially, maybe I could like put a big bore kit or something in it, but you know, then it just doesn't last as long. So, um, you know, yeah, the weight is a big important factor with this. There is other ways, like maybe could have made a rear hinging point for this thing that would have been um, stronger looking. But I just, that's why I say by looking is this is pretty stout. It's just going to have this look to it. Like it might not be strong, but that's pretty heavy stuff, you know. He's on there. Um, my goal today, I think, is to actually get this thing on all four wheels. So after I get these in, it's a matter of just mounting up a couple shocks. And I can roll this thing out of the building, and it'd be a lot easier to work on it outside the building than in here. But, uh, I'll get to it and get these on there. Alright, we got those uh, risers welded in. And pretty much what we're looking at is... There's your weld in. I got a weld going across the top, one across the bottom. Uh, later on, I'll... When I tear apart the frame, I can weld up the rest of it, and I want to put pretty much the sticks down below down here because when you cut a 45 and something, it ends up being one and a half times the width of this. And I'll put like a gusset right here. And I'll add some strength. Sorry, I just almost dropped the camera. It'll add some strength right here. Um, I also like to make a note that uh, when I was working out the garage on this thing, I was using a little 110 stick welder. On a generator, so this no isn't you know the best thing. It makes it so that I could build a footprint of a frame out there. Um, you, you know the welds that it was capable of doing, which you know right here, you know is acceptable for some things. You know like just dumb frame stuff that's not really doing anything. It's just body frame. You know I won't re go back and redo anything with this. Um, but I would like to add some gussets in here. I use the one by one cut 245s and put gussets like this. This section of frame is going to be under a lot of stress because I plan on mounting the shocks real far up into the frame and they're going to be driving up on the frame, pulling up on these. You know, same way with the other side. And then I got to also got the engine over there be torquing around. Probably put some kind of gussets from here to here on these on this motor mount right here, strengthen things up right there. So out there, I was basically I had a comment saying I was going this frame was going to twist to hell out there. So I just wanted to make a mention that it wasn't really it was just a footprint of a frame out there. Um, it is so much easier to put down weld here. I mean, I just take that stick welder here and just. And I can just go, you know, out there it was, I had to work with the generator basically. You kept arcing it, arcing it, arcing it to where the generator was um, kind of picking up an RPM and then you just, then you could get it going whenever it picked up. And then even at that, you could hear the generator back here like, whoa, 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 up and down as I was going across to welding. But anyways, uh, up next we'll uh, work on the shocks. These shocks are the rear shocks of a TRX 300EX. Um, the type of suspension that it was set up for was dependent on um, a lot of leverage. You know, these shocks are very strong, but at the same time, they don't have a whole lot of travel. So they're, what they're put into is a, a really uh, heavy leverage, like. Um, See, like if I was to mount this shock up one to one, which would be directly above the axle, it would be, it, it would, I would not have very much travel because it would be one to one. And like putting it, you know, what ratio it would be, but just say mounting it up here, you have all kinds of leverage, makes the shock so that it seems uh, weaker but that's the type of shock that this is and that's the situation that it needs to be put into I think that this machine is too heavy to run just one of these other than if I did a one-to-one -one situation or close to it maybe like over to here it would be 
And like I said, it would just be, I'd only have three inches of travel on my suspension. Whereas, say I might end up with eight inches of travel, mounting it up into here. But then this shock all alone would not be good enough for this machine. So I'm going to, I'm going to mount two of them somewhere in here. You know, probably two-thirds up the uh, arm. And then put mounts going across the frame, you know, to make the mounts for the upper part of it. Um, I don't know how it's going to work out. You know, I could mount these in there and then with two of them and end up with, like, super stiff suspension. Um, it could be weak. I doubt it, but with two of them in there, I doubt it. It's probably going to be leaning more towards too strong of suspension. Um, right now, I do have them set to the weakest spot. You know, preload. We'll go with that at first. And then uh, if it needs more, I can adjust them up. If it needs less, it's potentially that I could grind. Kind of hard to do one-handed. I could grind this out to make them a little weaker. Um, this type of spring... You know, with the amount of adjustment it has, stepping it up on those makes a lot of difference. But uh, I'm looking at probably putting in double bars. I'm going to put another bar running from here down um, so that this is strong enough to take the impact. And uh, of course, it's also going to add to making this arm stronger um, like I said not putting the piece back here um, if I do put something back here it might be just like some kind of body panel that's not actually going to be doing anything structural just be a panel um, also on the it's also going to do two things and make my shock mount make it stronger with putting double bars in but also I need to put in a chain tensioner uh, the chain tensioner is going to have two functions which is getting the chain so it's not rubbing on the frame right here and also adjusting the slack as the chain wears so uh, up next we'll put the, the bars in there alright got the uh, second bars tacked in they're just tacked in I'm probably gonna go ahead and put all the shock and stuff in set up and then uh, I'll take the arm back out and finish welding everything um, thinking about, I might just put, after I put the shock mounts on, I might actually take like a piece of one inch flat stock or something and kind of run it on top of here just to cover this up, make it look like it's one piece. Uh, just for cosmetic sakes. Uh, next thing is, is I need to figure out um, a baseline of where I want to mount these shock mounts. You know, measuring from there down so they're both the same. And then uh, after I get that in, and then we can start putting in crossbar. I think I'm going to put two of them in going across, which would make it two inch wide by one inch for this to, you know, because I think just one would it would bend it. But I think two will do the job. So uh, we'll get those guys in here. All right, we got those lower shock mounts in. Oh, they're just tacked. Just in case I want to try to adjust the level of dampening it's on it by moving the shock, uh, which would require, I need to put then, next we need to put the cross member in, I'll probably just put tack one of them in, because if I want to change it, then it's going to be requiring me to raise it or lower it, and in turn move these as well, so it's a lot of work even tacked in if it's not right. Uh, I do have both the shocks here. I'm um, kind of just playing around with this one because that one's all nice and painted up and I don't want to trash it. Um, so, you know, once I get it all to where I can just put the shock in, I'll put the nice one in there. But uh, I'll work on getting the cross member in there. Alright, got the uh, shocks all welded in there. Hopefully this works because it just sucks to have to... You said you had to put so much in here just to test it, you know? So many... I probably, you know, just barely got enough weld in there to do a load test. You know, like me standing in it and kind of romping in it. 
but yet yeah, it's enough weld that it would be real bad to have to cut it all back out to move it. So uh, at this point right now I should be able to take the jacks out and it'll sit on all fours and uh, we'll see what it, see how it goes. All right, I just did a jump test, and I'm telling you, it's working pretty nice. I'm going to go in. I've got the camera sitting here all on its own, and uh, I'm going to go in and step on it. You guys can see what it does and kind of do a little bit of jumping. It's not welded good enough to really get into it, but uh, all right. All right, right now, no weight drops about an inch so uh, the front's flexing quite a bit more but I gotta adjust it up but uh, you can see there that's uh that's perfect I mean if there's not enough I could always adjust those little rings up Right now it's looking like where I put my body weight of where the seat's going to be seems pretty good. Um, like I said, I got it. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but the front's flexing a lot more. I need to adjust those up, and there's a quite a bit of adjustment on them. But, uh, well, before I end this video, I'll clean all this crap out of here and drag this thing out of here, and we can get a look at it sitting out in the open. All right, I got it all sitting out here outside, and uh, it's sagging a little bit on the front. More than what it's going to be. Those shocks definitely need to adjust it up. Now that it has the weight of the unit on, I'm like kind of got an idea what I need to do. Got the seat sitting on some rims just to have the seat in there to kind of get a vision of it. But I think this thing's pretty stinking cool. I like it. But, uh,. I think I'll uh, call it a day for this video. It's probably 20 minutes long now or so.